Hello everyone. Welcome back to my Sheep Here is My Voice Ministries. On today, my lesson is going to be about testifying of the miracles of Jesus. Testifying of the miracles of Jesus. Now, we all have a testimony of something that God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. But before I go on to my lesson, in Philippians 4.19, the word of God says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let's read that again. In Philippians 4.19, the word of God says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Today, my lesson is going, going to be coming from Luke chapter 7. And it's going to be starting at 11. And we're going to read through 22. So Luke chapter 11 Luke chapter 7, 11 through 22. And it talks about the raising of the widow's son in name. The raising of the widow's son in name. And as we get to the end of this, after I read, when we get to the end, Jesus told this person to go and tell what you've seen me do. So Jesus, we need to tell of the miracles that God has performed in our lives through his son, Jesus Christ. So let's go on to the lesson and read it and see what happened. In Luke 7 and 11, the word of God says, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. So her, she was carrying her son. He was dead, and there was a lot of people that was in Nain. They was with her while she was carrying her son, and she was hurting and crying. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the, and he came and touched the brier. That they bear him, that they bear him, stood still, and he said, "Young man, I say unto thee, arise." Let's read that again. And he, this is Luke seven and fourteen, and he came and touched the brier, and they that bear him stood still, and he said, "Young man, I say unto thee." arise so in this in in luke 7 and 14 jesus told the man arise and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother and there came a fear on all and they glorified god saying that a great prophet is rise up among us and that God has visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him all, showed him of all these things. And John calling unto him, and John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another. So John sent two of, his, two of his disciples to Jesus to see, are you the one that we looking for? Or should we be looking for someone else? When the men were come unto him, they said, John, John Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. Testify. 
how that the blind see, the lame walk, the leapers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So Jesus told them, go your way and tell John what things you have seen. Tell them the things that you have seen and heard. So what things have we seen and heard? What things that have we experienced in our lives that God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ? Do we testify about it? Or do we get up in a testimony service and try to preach about the gospel? But if it's testimony service, then we're supposed to be testifying of the goodness of God through his son, Jesus Christ. So I would like to give a testimony in an example of what a testimony really is. When I was living in Pine Bluff, I had a water bill that was due. It was $40. I had $20 in my wallet. I didn't know what I was going to do. And all I kept doing was saying, Lord, I need to pay my water bill. I can't afford for my water to get cut off when my kids come in from school. I got to cook for my children. What am I going to do if my water gets cut off? I didn't have nobody to ask, so I was in a position where I had to talk to the Lord and ask the Lord to help me because I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't have nobody to ask. I didn't have no friends to call on. I didn't have no one to call on at that time but Jesus Christ, but the Lord. And I remember at this particular time, my friend, she was getting ready to get off from work, and she was like, come to my job. I'm getting ready to get off. And I was like, okay, I'll come. I'll just stand outside the door and wait till you get off from work. And as I was standing out there, it was a beautiful day. I was still talking to the Lord. And I was like, Lord, I need you to help me get this $20 so I can pay my light bill. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to pay my light bill. And I was just standing outside and something said, turn around. And when I turned around and I looked on the ground, it was a crispy brand new $20 bill that was laying on the ground. And when I saw it, I didn't know if I was, I felt like I was seeing things. And I just walked over there and I grabbed it. And I was the only one standing there. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for giving me this $20 so I can go and pay my water bill. Nobody was there with me standing there. So I know that God gave me that $20 to go and pay my water bill so that I can keep my water on. And Philippians 4 and 19 said, But my God shall supply all your needs, all my needs, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I'm going to give another testimony. I was in another position one time where my light bill was due, and I didn't get paid until Friday. And I thought for sure I can make it until Friday to pay my light bill. But it didn't happen. I got a knock at the door, and it was the light company. And they said, we're coming to collect your, the light bill money. If you don't have the light bill money, we're going to have to cut your lights off. And I told the man, I said, I won't have the money until Friday. He said, well, I'm very sorry, man, but I'm going to have to cut your lights off. And so I just closed the door, and I started walking around my house. And I said, Lord, I can't afford to have my lights cut off. I said, I need my lights, Lord. My kids coming home. I said, I got, I need my lights for my children. I said, when they come in from school and the lights is turned off, Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do if my lights get cut off? And so I just kept saying, Lord, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't have my lights. Lord, I need you to help me. Send me some help. And I heard another knock at the door about 10 minutes later. It was the light bill man. And he said, ma'am. He said, I was coming to let you know that you have a lot of vines that has grown around your meter on the side of your house, and I can't get to it. He said, and I don't have any cutters with me to cut it down to get to your meter to cut it off. He said, so when will you be able to pay your light bill? I said, I get paid on Friday. He said, well, I'm going to put in that I could not get to your meter, 
because of the vines and that you're going to get the light bill paid by Friday. And I said, thank you so much. And I knew that there was nothing but God. It was nothing but God that made a way for me to keep my lights on so I wouldn't have to experience being in the dark with my children. And it goes back to Philippians 4 and 19. But my God shall supply all your needs, my needs, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. What did Jesus tell the two disciples that came to, that John sent to Jesus? Jesus told them, go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. So I'm telling you the things that I have seen. I have saw these things. I experienced these things with my own with my own two eyes. This is not nothing that anybody has told me. This is something that I have experienced with my God. This is what God has done for me. And so I'm sharing what God has done for me. And I have one more testimony, three of them that God gave me to share. When I was a little bitty girl, maybe about six or seven years old, it was me and my sister and my cousin. And we was living in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, down Highway 15. It's really country down there. There's not many houses. It's like maybe one house here, and then it's a big field with horses. And then if you go a little bit further, it's another house. And so on this particular road, uh, people don't travel on this road because it was like a road that was hid back off in the woods and it had rocks all on it. But this is where my grandmother lived. We was living with my grandmother at the time. And my grandmother, she was a, a beautiful woman. She was she was loving. She loved us. But she was very poor. She didn't have um, uh, even a bathroom in her home. You know, she had a, a potty chair and you know, but she made the best out of it. I remember she would go fishing all the time, and she cooked her food like that. You know, she didn't go to the store much. Maybe to go get side. She was a old school grandmother. She raised her chickens and and had a big old beautiful garden in her backyard. So that's the way my grandmother survived, and I can remember that. She didn't have a big beautiful home. Her home was she she made the best out of what she had, and. We, me and my sister and my cousin, we had wanted to go to the store, but at this particular time, my grandmother, she didn't have any money to give us to go to the store. So from what I can remember, we was on our way to the store anyway with no money. And from what I can remember, we was going to steal. We was going, we going to go pocket us some candy and we going to the store anyway. So as we begin to walk down this dirt road, you had to walk down this long dirt road to even get to Highway 15. And as we was walking on this road, we was trying to decide what we was going to do. It was three of us. And we walked on this particular road. And as we took steps down this road, we saw a $1 bill, a crispy $1 bill laying on the ground. And my cousin, she picked it up first and said, I found a dollar. I found a dollar. So me and my sister was like, well, you got to give us a quarter because back then a quarter, you can go in the store and get a lot. So we was like, you got to share with us and give us a quarter. We want a quarter out of it. And then we, she was like, okay, I give y'all a quarter a piece and I get 50 cents since I found it. We was like, okay, that's fine. And maybe we took maybe 10, 11, maybe 12 more steps down, down this dirt road. And there was another crispy $1 bill laying on the ground. And my sister Keisha, she got it this time. And so she grabbed it and she was like, I found the dollar too. I found the dollar too. And I was like, y'all got to give me another 50 cent out of it. Or oh, I'm telling grandma, y'all got to share with me. And I was feeling bad because I didn't have a dollar. So we we was excited. We couldn't believe it. It was, it was just be, well, beyond us because nobody traveled on this road. And we was trying to find out where was this, this money coming from. We was kids. And so we took maybe 12 more steps down the road, and there was one more crispy $1 bill laying on this dirt road. And I ran and got it, and I had my dollar as well. And we jumped. We was excited. And it just brings tears to my eyes even right now because I know that God sent that money to me and my sister and my cousin down that dirt road. Nobody traveled on this road. And that was a miracle, and I would never ever forget that miracle, how God provided 
Philippians 4.19, he supplied our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God sent that money to us, and he made sure that we was able to go to the store and buy everything that we wanted, because back then you could buy so much with a dollar. And I just wanted to share these testimonies, been in my heart, and I wanted to share them with everybody just to let everybody know that God is real. And when you find yourself in a situation, talk to the Lord. You don't have to do a long prayer that lasts for 15 hours. You can just simply talk to the Lord because that's what I did. I said, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I can't afford for my, I don't, Lord, please bless me not to have my water cut off. Lord, please bless me not to have my lights cut off. And I wasn't even doing, making smart investments with my money at the time. But when God loves us, he don't change like we do. He love us. Even when we mess up, he still love us. And that is how we get to know him, by talking with him and asking him for forgiveness and asking him to help us so he can show you that he's a real God. If you don't ever talk to him, how can he do anything for you if you don't give him a chance by talking to him and calling on his holy name? And that is what happened right here when he seen the widow's son and saw her walking down, holding her son, and, and he was dead. He had, the, the word of God said that Jesus had compassion on her. He, know, he knows what we need. He knows our hearts. He knows our pains. He knows our wants. He knows our needs. He knows the things that we don't need. He knows everything about us. And that's the, the thing about God. He, lo he, he, he don't, one day he love us, and then the next day he don't. He don't love like we do. One day we love somebody, then the next day we don't. We mad at him. God is not like that. He love us all the time. Even when we mess up, all we have to do is ask for forgiveness. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we just trust in the Lord and testify on the things that God has done for you in your life, don't be ashamed to testify about the goodness of the Lord and the great things that God has done in your life. Never be afraid to testify on that because God gave you that testimony. Whoever these testimonies can bless that I just gave, I'm happy. I want to bless somebody. I want to be able to bless someone to see that God is good. God is a good God. So let's just remember that if we testify of the goodness of God, we don't know who is going to bless. We don't know who is for. We just don't know. But we don't, you don't hold what God has done for you. Testify on the miracles of the Lord. Testify on the good things that God has done for you. And that was my lesson today from Luke chapter 7, starting at 11. It talks about the, the death of the, the widow's son that was dead and how Jesus raised him back to life. And then he told John's two disciples to go back and tell John and testify of the things you have seen and heard. And that is my lesson today. Testify about the things that you have seen and heard. When it comes down to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for tuning in to my lesson today. I love you and God bless you. And I will see you again next week if the Lord says the same. Goodbye.